Hey everybody, welcome back to Ontario Cryptids. Uh, first off, I want to thank every single one of you who have recently subscribed to my channel. I want to thank you for all the support that you're showing. Uh, second, I am changing up the mic. Um, I've got a recent, uh, I guess, complaint as you might say, that I'm a little bit too soft or the volume is too low. So I am trying up a little different positioning and volume. So let me know if you can hear me okay or let me know if I'm too loud right now. Um, and on that note guys, let's get into these three next stories that I'm going to be sharing with you, all which comes from British Columbia. So guys, go grab yourself a drink, a snack, and sit back and relax. All right, this first story takes place on September 12, 2016 in the province of British Columbia uh, near Harrison Hot Springs. My name is Ingemar Rommel. I am a 52-year-old Swedish archaeologist and a proud member of the BFRO. I have attended several BFRO expeditions in North America over the years. North Florida Expedition 2009 North California 2009, the British Columbia 2009, Vancouver Island South 2009, and the Olympic Peninsula Expedition also in 2009. I also attended the expedition in British Columbia in 2016, 2017, and 2019. The North American conferences that I have taken part of was the celebration of John Green in Harrison Hot Springs in 2011, the Sasquatch Summit, and the Bigfoot Conference in Kennewick 2017. I have also been walking around alone in the forest of North America looking for Sasquatch and, and footprints. In a hot spot area, a forest in North Florida, I found an old footprint in the sand in February, 20, in February of 2009. In the mountains above Bluff Creek in Northern California, I found a footprint in snow on a mountain road in May 2009. I have pictures of both. I was surprised of how easy it was for me to find footprints of Sasquatch in the USA. I also participated in the conference and the expeditions that was organized in Moscow and Siberia in October 2011. I have met eyewitnesses and I have heard many stories from people from USA, Canada and Russia. I know that Sasquatches exist and I'm, I proudly stand for that anytime and anywhere. I believe that Sasquatches are bipedal apes or something more human-like. The future will give us the answer. Anyway, I attended the BFRO 2016 British Columbia Expe Expedition that took place on September 8th through to the 11th. On Monday, September the 12th, the organizer and the rest of the group left the area where we had the expedition and started to drive back to Vancouver. We were four men in two cars. I was sitting as a passenger in the second car. The sun was shining this day and the landscape was very beautiful to look at. Being a Swedish tourist, I was looking out through the car window as much as possible and talking to the driver. After driving for some time, around 3.30 p.m. in the afternoon, we got close to the bridge on Morris Valley Road and Weaver Creek Road by the 12-kilometer sign. Then I saw movement on the left side of the road. I turned my head to the left and saw for what I would estimate to be about two to three seconds a reddish-brown human-looking figure with an ape-looking head that quickly moved from a trench up towards some trees and then froze. The body was still, but the head was locked to the car, and the face, the eyes, followed the car as the car moved. I had eye contact with the figure, and the eyes was very mean-looking. 
I got really scared by looking into his eyes, and a thought it immediately came to my head. Alak apa. That means ape in Swedish. That's what came into my head. I would call it as a reaction based on instinct. The eyes was very frightening, and he really looked like a killer. He looked intelligent, but he also seemed to be aware of the danger of being seen by a human. He was not relaxed. He was worried. The figure that I saw was clearly male. No breasts or broad hips or anything like that. I am six foot three, and I think that he was as tall as me. He was thin. He had no big muscles, and he did not look like Paddy from Bluff Creek. To me, Paddy looks like a bipedal gorilla. I told this to Bob Gimlin when I met him in Kennewick in 2017, and he told me that they come in all sorts of looks. Some were ape-like and some were human-looking. The male that I saw looked more like a mix between an orangutan and a human. He looked like a slender male around 20 to 35 years in human age. He had short reddish-brown hair on his body. The best description that I can give of him is that he looked like the reconstructed face on a Google picture of an Australopithecus africanus, but with a higher forehead and less prognatism. For some odd reason that I cannot explain, I did not say anything or do anything. I did nothing. I just froze. I did not even tell the driver or ask him to stop the car. This is very sad because I had a chance of a lifetime. I was well armed. I had two cameras in my side pocket, one knife, one tomahawk, and a bottle of bear spray on me. As a Swede in bear cougar wolf country, I have to watch my back. The driver is a tough man and an experienced Canadian hunter. When we got back to Vancouver and offloaded the gear, I told Jason about the sighting, but I felt too stupid for not saying anything while we were there. Jason told me that BC investigator Bill Miller have been investigating a sighting that an Italian man had some years earlier on the other side of the bridge. Today I am ashamed over this and regretful. I should have said and done something. However, I have read so many Class A reports on the BFRO homepage that I know that it is normal to react like this. I hope to someday in the future to get a second chance. Two days later, on the Wednesday, I came back to the place of my sighting in a rented car. I camped at the nearest campsite and spent two days walking around in that place on my sighting looking for that male Sasquatch and footprints. I was really scared when I did this. I saw footprints in the moss on both sides of the road that must have been made by the Sasquatch. They were of my size even though I doubt that, t that they could have been made by a human. I also saw deer prints in the moss on the other side of the road. If I had been an experienced tracker then, I would have been able to gather more information. There is a beautiful stream that goes under the bridge and into Harrison Lake. It is a very calm and beautiful place, but there are private property signs all over, so I was trespassing. On the Thursday afternoon, BFRO BC investigator Jason Sackerson came to the place of my sighting and we walked around and looked for signs. 2017, before the second expedition in the area, I was back at that place of my sighting with another BFRO BC investigator and told him of what I had seen. In the autumn of 2011, I wrote an essay at the Gutenberg University in archaeology. My topic was Sasquatch. I got a Swedish University points for that essay. I tried in that essay to estimate the IQ level of Sasquatch based on what they do, their behavior when they are seen by humans. That essay has come up in my mind recently. What level of intelligence does it take for an animal to understand that it is better to only move the head 
and not the body in order not to be seen but also to be able to see the humans. I want from the bottom of my heart to thank the founder of the BFRO, MM, for starting this wonderful organization. I also want to thank the leader of the expedition, expedition Jason Sackerson, for organizing it and inviting me to participate. It is thanks to these two great men that I saw a Sasquatch. For this I am eternally grateful. I have for different reasons waited to report the sighting. One reason is that I needed time to digest my sighting since it made me so shaken. I needed to think about it and try and find out the motives for his movements and why he had such a strong eye look at me. It was his eyes that scared me. In August of 2009 I visited John Green at his home in Harrison Hot Springs to interview him on his research on Sasquatch. One of my questions was where in Canada are there Sasquatches? He answered me right here around Harrison Lake there has been several observations here for over many years and he said that Sasquatch live everywhere in Canada where there is forest, fresh water and a healthy population of deer. John Green was right. So as you saw I added the picture of the Australopithecus africanus so very interesting um, it is I do find it interesting how different the Sasquatches look or Bigfoots look across North America and some people do claim they look more ape-like while others claim they look more human-like so it's not inconceivable to think that like us humans there are Sasquatches that look different I mean us humans we don't all look alike Another interesting thing I noted was how Ingemar froze when he saw the Sasquatch. You also hear many other accounts of people freezing, kind of letting it go like their mind doesn't want to believe or process what they've just seen. Okay, this second story takes place on February 12, 2018 the province of British Columbia uh, near Kamloops. It was 12.22 a.m. on February 12, 2018. I was driving home from working late. I live in a rural area that is about 45 minutes from town. Cruising at about 90 kilometers an hour on two-lane road, I had to almost come to a complete stop to avoid what looked like a seven-foot tall man covered in medium brown hair. He did not turn to look at me, just focused on crossing the road. He was fast and managed to cross two lanes in about five or six steps. As I slow down, I tried to make out any details of what I was watching, but he was gone into the trees before I could determine any more than what I just described. The temperature that morning was negative 18 Celsius and the location is just before Hefley Lake Road turn off on Hefley Creek, British Columbia, Canada. I am a hunter and hiker who's lived here for three and a half years now and I have never seen an animal like this before. Okay, so this is going to be the third and final story of the day. So. Uh, this next story takes place on August 12, 2008, uh, again in British Columbia, and it's near a town called Smithers. It was around midnight, and I was with two friends walking through a small forest less than a block from my house. We were standing around talking when we all heard what sounded like a tree branch snapping. My friend kept talking while I was curious and investigated. After a few minutes of looking into the forest I saw something seven or eight and a half feet tall about 15 to 20 feet from me staring directly at me leaning with one arm against a tree. 
It was in the middle of summer, and the forest we were in was very dense, so all I could see was the outline of this thing. I called to my friends to come over and take a look at it. When they started walking over, the creature turned and walked out of the forest and onto the road. Honestly, I was so scared, I turned and ran down the trail. Neither of my friends saw it, but they believed me because they said, that they've never seen me so scared. We went back the next day to check out the area I had seen it in. Now I go into the forest every day so I know it well and there has been freshly made paths through many parts of the forest including the spot where I saw it and the direction in which it went. There were also a number of branches and even trees broken in half and there was a very large tree that was pulled right out from the ground. About three nights later, me and one of my friends was there during the sighting, were walking about 350 yards from the forest, and it was a very foggy night. I couldn't see the forest or my house, which were both very close by. We both stopped talking and at the, exactly the same time when we heard something crashing through the forest. This continued for about five minutes and then it stopped. So there you have it guys, three fantastic stories. Uh, once more, I would like to thank all of you guys who have subscribed to my channel recently. I truly appreciate it. And I thank you guys for coming back and checking out more awesome stories that I'm posting. Now, uh, on, on a last note, if you would like to share your encounter stories in a safe environment, please forward your stories to OntarioCryptids at gmail.com. And your stories does not have to originate from Ontario, and you can be as anonymous as you would like. All right, guys, that's going to be it for today. Thank you so much, and be safe.